a number of people had questions about transformers and also the problem on the homework dealing with transformers. So I thought I would do a short video um, just talking about transformers and then go through an example. So a transformer is a device that uses electromagnetic induction and it allows you to take some primary voltage that you put input, just kind of like plugging something into an outlet that's 120 volts. And the idea is, is that you can get a different amount of voltage out from the other end of the transformer. And this is used in a variety of different ways. So if you were to plug your laptop into an outlet, you'll notice that there's usually some sort of a a box between the plug that you plug into the outlet and the plug that you plug into your computer and inside that box is actually a small transformer and what that's doing is is it's taking the 120 volts that goes in the outlet and it's reducing that voltage when it comes to your computer it's allowing the battery inside your computer to charge and so on so a couple of key things with transformers is you have some um, some sort of magnetic material, magnetic core here. This is like an iron core. There's different types of transformers, but this one has an iron core, which is a magnetic material. And then you have coils that are wrapped around one end of the transformer. And then on the other side, you have coils wrapped around the other end, which is called the secondary uh, side of the transformer. So one of the important ways that transformers work is to use the um, concept of electromagnetic induction. So we send in alternating current on the primary side of the transformer. And what happens is, is as current wraps around these coils, it produces a magnetic field that passes through the center of the coils. And because the current that's input is AC or alternating, that creates an alternating magnetic field through the center of the primary coils. And because you have an iron core, that magnetic field that's changing in time also wraps around and passes through the secondary coils. So on the other side, I now have a magnetic field that's passing through the center of these coils, just like if I was moving a magnet back and forth. And that changing magnetic field, according to electromagnetic induction, induces a voltage and a current through these secondary coils. So the two coils are not connected together, but because of the fact that you have this idea of electromagnetic induction producing a magnetic field that's oscillating in time from the primary that passes through the secondary, I can get voltage and current out the other side. One of the important parts of transformers is the ratio of the number of turns that you have on the primary to the number of turns of the coils you have on the secondary. If you have more turns on the primary side compared to the number of turns on the secondary side as we have here, this is considered a step down transformer and the voltage that you get out here in the secondary will be less than the voltage that you put in through the primary. If this was reversed and you had more turns on the secondary over here compared to what you have on the primary, that would be considered a step up transformer and the voltage that you would get out on this side would be greater than what you put in on this side. So let's go through an example and consider um, what we might do uh, in terms of looking at the transformer, but let's talk about the formulas. So the first thing that's important about transformers is that the power that you put in to the primary in an ideal transformer is exactly equal to the power that you get out in the secondary. You can't get something for nothing. You can't increase the amount of power or the energy that you get out, but the amount that you put in is equal to the amount that you get out in a perfect ideal transformer. So we know that power is current multiplied by voltage. And so uh, if I take the current in the primary multiplied by the voltage in the primary input, it has to equal the current in the secondary times the voltage in the secondary that we have output. So if we know what the power is in the primary coil, we automatically know what the power is in the secondary coil. We just have to find one and we automatically know the other. The other thing that I mentioned earlier is the number of turns, the ratio of the number of turns from the secondary to the primary is going to tell us how the voltage changes between the primary and the secondary. So it turns out that the voltage of the primary um, 
the ratio of the voltage in the primary to the number of turns in the primary has to exactly equal the voltage in the secondary compared to the number of turns in the secondary. So if I solve for the voltage in the secondary, it's equal to the number of turns I have in that secondary coil times the ratio of the voltage in the primary to the number of turns in the primary. So we can use these two expressions to solve for a lot of information in our transformer. So let's consider an example that's similar to the homework. So a transformer has a primary voltage of 240 volts. The number of turns in the primary coil is 120. And suppose that the input current for the primary is 0.2 amps, keeping in mind that that 0.2 amps is representing the fact that it is oscillating in time, and so this is equivalent to what DC would be, but the current does have to oscillate in time. So we want to know what is the power that's in the primary coil. So we know that power is just current multiplied by voltage. We know the current is 0.2 amps, and we know the voltage is 240 volts. So in this particular case, if I take 0.2 amps and I multiply by 240 volts, I get 48 watts. So now that I know that the power in the primary is 48 watts, I also know that the power in the secondary is 48 watts. Right? So they have to be equal to each other, and we can use that to our advantage to solve for different parts of the secondary um, part of the transformer. So now, similar to the homework question, suppose that I have that same information, and I want to point out here that there is a mistake in the PowerPoint. This should say 240, not 200, and I forgot to fix that. So uh, this is 240 volts in the primary. Suppose that I have um, two different transformers, one that has 12 secondary coils and one that has 360 secondary coils. And we want to determine what is the voltage in the secondary and what is the current in the secondary. So if we go back to our original problem, we know that the primary voltage is 240 volts, again not 200. The number of turns in the primary is 120. And we know that the current in the primary was 0.2. And we solved for the power, and that power was 48 watts. So suppose I consider transformer 1, which only has 12 turns in the secondary, and I want to figure out the voltage. So I know the voltage in the secondary is the number of turns multiplied by the ratio of the voltage in the primary to the number of turns in the primary. So I have 12 secondary turns. I have 240 volts in the primary. Again, mistake here. And then divided by the number of turns in the primary. So if I do that calculation, I get 24 volts. So the secondary voltage in a transformer that has 120 turns to a ratio of 12 turns is 24 volts. So the voltage has reduced basically by a factor of 10. It was 240, and now it's 24. Suppose I also want to calculate the current in the secondary. Well, I can use the fact that I already know what the power is. Remember, we found the power in the primary was 48 watts, and if we know the power in the primary, we know the power in the secondary. So rearranging the expression for power, which is current times voltage, I get that the current is the power divided by the voltage. So the current in the secondary with only 12 turns is 48 watts divided by the voltage, which is 24 volts, and I get 2 amps. So the very first transformer has fewer turns in the secondary compared to the primary. It's a step down transformer. The voltage is reduced from 240 to 24. And as the voltage goes down, the current goes up. So I can't get something for nothing. As the voltage goes down, the current goes up uh, because the power has to stay the same. I can go the same through the same process if I have 360 turns. So the number of turns is 360, the voltage for the primary is 240, the number of turns in the primary is 120. So if I multiply that out, I get 720 volts. And I can do the same thing for the current. It's 48 watts, same power, right, no matter what, because the power in the primary is the same. Divide by the voltage, and I get 0.066, and it's repeated amps. So 
uh, I have more turns here in the secondary compared to the primary, basically three times the number of turns. And as a result, the voltage has gone up because I have more turns in the secondary. And it's gone up by a factor of three because there are three times the number of turns in the primary compared or in the secondary compared to the primary. Uh, when I calculate the current, the current has dropped down. So again, you can't get something for nothing, so a step-up transformer steps up the voltage, but the end result is that the current is reduced. So I hope this helps those of you who are having a little difficulty with the uh, example on transformers.